Thank you for tuning in to Tanaka TV, the best and future biggest fight channel on YouTube. Don't forget to hit that like, that comment, that subscribe button. We're trying to get this channel to over 2K subs by the end of the year. And today we hit 1,150 subs. So we can get there, people. But we cannot get there without your support. So thank you for those who support this channel. And thank you for those who support this channel in the future. I truly appreciate it. Now, we're starting this What If series. Now, I got this idea from Marvel. Do you, do you guys recall, for all my Marvel, all my superhero fans, when Marvel started this series of What If? What if zombies invaded the marvel universe what if aliens came down and started abducting certain marvel superheroes you get what i'm saying i'm trying to start that same idea when it comes to the mixed martial arts world so today we're going to talk about what if anderson silva was in his prime in today's ufc competitive rankings and I must say, I think it would be very, very interesting. We're talking about a guy who reigned in the divisions, who was dominant in the divisions for about 10 years straight, who who had a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 fight win streak. He dominated between the, the middleweight and the light heavyweight division. So we're going to look at those two divisions. And first, we're going to start with the middleweight division. First, we have, we'll start at number 10. We've got Paulo Costa. I'm just going to name notable mentions. Jared Cannonier, Marvin Vittori, Robert Whitaker, Israel Adesanya, Sean Strickland, and the current champion right now is Duplessis. We saw him at the tail end of his career go up against Israel Adesanya. Now, this was by no means a prime Anderson Silva. He was already on his way out. And I think it would have been a way more competitive matchup. I think Israel Adesanya had a bunch of respect for Anderson Silva and was not going in there to knock him out. I'm just going to be honest. He had way too much respect for Anderson Silva. Granted, he got the job done, but finishing Anderson Silva, I don't think was in his was, was was on his agenda. So if we're talking purely based off of skill set here, I think it would have been a very competitive matchup. And if we're talking about him going against somebody like Israel Adesanya or Sean Strickland, I think. I think Anderson Silva would have a very solid chance against Sean Strickland. Anderson Silva's ability to strike, his ability to manage distance, his ability to mix up his strikes and be very creative as a striker. I think some of the best and most creative strikers, if we're talking about specifically creativity here, you've got to put Anderson Silva in there. You've got to put John Jones in there. Izzy, maybe Max Holloway, but Anderson Silva was a very, very creative striker, and I think that that would have caused Sean Strickland some problems. I think Sean Strickland's advantage would be that he would be able to pressure Anderson Silva, and that he'd be able to mix in grappling against Anderson Silva, and that would cause Anderson some problems, but... I'm not going to count out Anderson Silva for that. I, I think that a prime Anderson Silva would be able to beat Sean Strickland and a Robert Whitaker and a Marvin Vittori. And, and I understand that the main conversation, the main thought process for a lot of you would be, well, the fighters back in the day were not and are not the same as today's competition. If you're looking at people that, that Anderson Silva beat, Stefan Bonner, Chael Sonnen, Yushin Okami, Vitor Belfort, Damian Maya, Forrest Griffin, Talos Latis, Patrick Cote, James Irvin. We're talking about a murder's row of fighters for that time period. But does that match up with 
today's competition. I think in some ways you can make the argument that no, it doesn't. You know, you, you have better trainers now. Better knowledge of nutrition and what you're putting into your body. We're talking about Anderson Silva in his prime. He reigned probably, if I had to say that he was in his prime during around 2009. We're heading into 2025. So we're talking about at least an almost, what, 2009 to 2025, almost a 15-year deficit in um, sports science and nutrition, knowledge of the game, knowledge of, of, of what is successful in mixed martial arts. Because... Things have changed, people. I think you're starting to see a more focused role when it comes to being able to grapple. When you were in the UFC during a great portion of Anderson Silva's era, you were either a heavy striker and you could not defend a takedown to save your life. Or you were a grappler and you could not box or kickboxer or, or throw a kick to save your life. Now we're starting to see a little bit of people forming a mixed martial arts style that covers all bases. Unless you're a special case like maybe like it like like a Israel Adesanya or an Alex Perea. On the other end when you're talking about grapplers, you know, you know Khabib or the the Islam Magachev but for the most part, you're, you're, you're starting to see a wave of complete mixed martial artists. And I think that that is the biggest evolution to what is happening to mixed martial arts today. And so, if we were, were to bundle this all together and really get to the point of this, could Anderson Silva be as success as successful and could he be champion today if he were in his prime of course i think anderson silva could be i, I think at least anderson silva would be a top contender i'm just gonna be honest i think he'd be a top contender and if we're looking at the the 205 division I think he would have an even better chance. Now, granted, I think he would have a problem with Alex Perea. Alex Perea would definitely be his biggest problem because we're talking about apples to apples here. Striker to striker, Alex Perea is that guy. He has great power, good distance control, a very well-rounded stand-up game. I think I'll, I think Alex Perea would be his biggest problem right now. But outside of that in the 205 division, I've got prime Anderson Silva beating Jamal Hill. I've got prime Anderson Silva beating Volkan Ozdemir, uh, Jiri, John. I've got Ander a prime Anderson Silva beating them. I have to keep saying prime here, people, because I think a lot of people may forget of who Anderson Silva was. Do you remember what he did to Forrest Griffin? And again, I know that this is not the same level as what we have today, but you, but that, 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 that does not take away what Anderson Silva did. Do you remember what he did to Stephen Bonner, Forrest Griffin, Talos Latest? Patrick Ote, James Irvin. Now, you may say, okay, oh, by the way, what he did to Vitor Belfort was absolutely insane. But how he beat Chael Sonnen twice. And in a lot of those fights, he made it look very, very easy. Anderson Silva was ahead of his time. And what a lot of people would consider to be the, the Michael Jordan of MMA. So I would love to get you guys' opinions on what if Anderson Silva were to join the octagon in today's world. I really do think that he would at least be a top contender.
prime Anderson Silva, he would be a top contender for sure. Hard to say if he would be champion. Then he'd have a better chance of being Duplessis than if he were to fight uh, Alex Perea. So comment down below, people, what you think about Anderson Silva and how he would do in today's world. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.